Hey everyone, it's Simone. I'm here with Bella Crystal from Unlock Your Design. And we are in our Living the Body series, The Cauldron, Medicinal Foods, Chinese Medicine, I Ching, I Ching and Human Design with our special guest, Teresa Padilla. Um, today's episode is going to focus on the I Ching and medicinal foods and um, this wonderful creek cauldron we have been uh, living in. Teresa, Bella, so excited to be here with you guys today. Yeah, that's great. It feels like morning to me, but it's not here. <laughs> so um, last week uh, in our container, we learned so many valuable um, tools and strategies and information about um, how food is medicinal and how it can change your life. And Teresa, I'm so excited to hear um, your what you're going to present with with um, the the I Ching today. Why don't you get us started? Okay, I've got my little bag that I've had since my doctoral study with my little coins in it for the I Ching. <laughs> I cast it last night and preparing because I'm, I'm really inward today and it, it's kind of appropriate for this, I think, <laughs> version of it. Um, so last night I kind of, I had an idea of what I was doing. Of course, that didn't come out at, at all, you know, as far as uh, what, what flowed. So I guess I'll start with I cast I Ching last night in preparation for today. And uh, what came through was the 44, the 44th I Ching, which, you know, is my attraction sphere, but <laughs> very much appropriate for today, I think, with this group and the portals of deconditioning and uh, synarchy. And it was line two was the changing line. So I just wanted to start off with just reading a little bit of that and then we could just go from there if that's okay. This is the I Ching that I used in my feng shui studies. I started, well, we'll show that first slide in a minute, but there's three different I Chings that I've really used. This one I love the best and it's the Book of Changes, The Unchanging Truth by Hua Ching Ni. He's retired uh, in his practice, but I, uh, I, love, lo I love what he does. Anyway, um, if you want to go to I Ching that really describes the movements of the I Ching and breaks down all the systems with it, this is a really good one. Um, so 44. have it marked here. And this I Ching is called the encounter, meeting together. And, you know, it's likened to an overly strong woman because it's, it's got one yin line on the bottom and then everything else is yang. So above. So that yin is in a precarious position. It's not in the best position in amongst all the, the yang energy. So the yin has to be uh, careful, has to be not cautious, but uh, it's not in a position of rising. It's not in a position of, of uh, leadership in any way. And, uh, it definitely has a lot of yang. So there can be difficulty that can occur in that if there, the yin becomes too strong and tries to overtake the yang, <laughs> so to speak. So um, in the second line, which is where it rests with the I Ching, he describes this as there is a fish in the kitchen. It's not for the outsiders. 
Uh, here there are five men and one woman. Competition exists because the second line is centered in a naturally responsive res relationship to the first. So the first and second lines, you know, they work together in a pair. Um, the first line is the fish which belongs to the second line. If the second line takes charge of the situation while matters are still controllable, controllable and before things becomes messy, order will prevail. If the second line can exert its yawn energy in the beginning to put the fish safely under its control, there will be no overall problem. So what I see with this is kind of what's been kind of flowing through me and I've been receptive uh, pretty much all last night and this morning and to this I Ching, which is kind of how I prepare for the portals of deconditioning when I'm pairing the medicinal foods with each one of the transits. I have an idea and then what's flowing through just kind of comes out, but I'm receptive to it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to show because some people might be new to the I Ching. So you were speaking about the broken line on the bottom and then all the all the full lines. So I thought it was yeah, I just wanted to show everybody the, the hexagram of the 44 that you were speaking about. Yeah, thank you. So like what like what's been flowing through with that uh, is self discipline. When you have, we have things that occur on the outside and there might be a lot of young people in our life or a lot of young activities that are in our situation, but yet our uh, inner environment and where we are is in a young position, things occur very subtly. We can't over command them, we can't over manipulate them. I mean, we can, and then we have things that don't work out. So I guess I, what I really wanna bring forth with working with the I Ching is it requires self-discipline. Um, it's, I'm working with, you know, human design and everything. It's not about having a desire, using it for good fortune, and wielding it how you want to wield it, it's not going to work that way because it'll come back, you know, come back in your face. It, it doesn't work that way. So you have to learn how to harmonize. You have to learn how to yield. You have to learn how to have the correct yin to yang to that environment. And we're not always going to know that. So it takes um, first of all, willingness and a receptivity to going where things are taking you, where maybe you, you've never been before and you're not comfortable there. I'm not really comfortable being in the place I am right now, like this moment in time, I do not feel comfortable at all. Um, but I'm willing because I've had a lot of practice of being willing and being and have self discipline. Um, if you don't have something that you have self discipline with, then, and I'm not talking routine, you know, I'm talking a discipline where you have a very solid inner ideal that's a self realize purpose that you are willing to give all your all of your energy to no matter what and if you have that kind of and it doesn't really i don't think matter what that discipline is um what matters is that you have some kind of discipline like that and when you have that you can use the I Ching correctly you can use the human design, I think, understand your strategy and authority more correctly. What do you think, Bella and Simone? Well, I am thinking about the, the stability sphere. 
uh, what, how Richard speaks about that process. Uh, and this is the design Saturn and it sits there in the very middle of our chart. And it's when Venus trust life enough when the inner child trusts life enough it can kind of like lean back and feel that saturn that is holding her and the very first line of the hexagram is called self-discipline and that's the first thing <laughs> and i've been looking at that process even when it comes to health and when it comes to disease and i might not go through all the lines but the first three lines are self-discipline fearlessness and choicelessness and for me i can i can feel that as when you get like a diagnosis for example like you know some people are like okay let me give all my power away to the doctor and give away my sovereignty but for me that that process the body is telling you something so there is a process to go through and the first three three stages is that self-discipline you know i'm sovereign so i'm am i going to work here whether it's with the I Ching or whether it's with another method or something like how can i take responsibility for this thing that my body is telling me and there is a fearlessness to it of course because it's so easy to collapse and say save me you know or I'm out of here so to have that fearlessness of saying I'm going to face this even if it's uncomfortable like you're saying with even sitting here so we can kind of use it in many different processes and then there is also that surrender that you're speaking about that choicelessness okay this is what's going on this is what the cosmos this is what you know my body my inner cosmos the outer cosmos is telling me there is something to learn here so I'm going to have an acceptance there's a choicelessness in the situation being what it is so that is the first three stages that I just feel you know it's it's so perfect because we are speaking about health and living the body and you're going right there into the matter which is that design saturn so like yeah i'm like sitting here nodding and like <laughs> the process i love that i love that thank you wow <laughs> what about you simone i love what Bella shared. I think it's so grounding with what you shared. And um, Corinda, one of our participants live, um, uh, commented, I feel the 31 in this transmission as well, because right now we're in the 31. And as you were talking, and as Bella was talking, and what was, you know, being alive in me was how present the 31 is with us right now. Um, and I think it's um, so powerful that the 44 came through when you asked for guidance today. You know, I want to honor the, the divinity in that, you know, the purity in that consciousness. Yeah, there's a part of my body wants to cry. <laughs> my body wants to rejoice right now. Uh, my body wants to be silent. There's a lot of uh, a lot of things flowing through right now. You know, I was thinking about starting this off with a Dalian movement, uh, but it's a little bit longer than the time that we have on here. But um, maybe some sometime somewhere because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm feeling that it's good for you know the group um but maybe we can go to the next the the first slide <laughs> unless anybody has anything else let's let's start let's see where we are Is, is it the right yeah. one? Mm -hmm. okay. So that's the book that I held up and that I read out of and that I did the, uh, pulled the 44 from last night. Um, the E chain originally was used for divination. And later on, I think uh, it was transformed into the cosmological text that we use with all different systems now. Uh, so before it was more of an observation kind of inner and outer method, 
because if you think about when it was developed, there wasn't really set religions at that time, so to speak. So what people had was nature and their conditions and circumstances. <laughs> so it was very much about observation and what was going on. And so they used it for that. And they later on when it was used, brought in with the, uh, I think 10 wings is what the actual uh, writing was that developed it into the cosmological text. Then it started to go in, it could go into all these different systems to where you could use it for, well, later on, you know, medicinal foods, martial arts, you know, astrology, just all different things. The first I Ching book that I used uh, was when I was learning, meta, studying metaphysics and uh, went into the bookstore and this book just kind of called me over and it was a big book, you know, I think eight and a half by 14 maybe with a big picture on the front. And uh, it just called me forth and it was images from the I Ching visual meditation on the book of change by Ann Williams. So it's literally a book of big images for each I Ching and you, you know, you focus on the image um, and cast your, cast your coins. So that was my really first work with I Ching and I, I loved it. And, you know, I gave that book away and I wish I had that book. So I'll probably, I found, I couldn't find it. And then last night I looked again and then there were some, there were some more, more of the books. So I'll probably get one. Um, the next time that I formally studied the Ching was in my doctoral study. And that was with the Richard well, Wilhelm edition, which is probably the most, I think, common and popular edition. Uh, that's not my favorite by any means. <laughs> but anyway, I cast, I think, the I Ching in my doctoral study uh, every day for two years, and we dissected it, let's just say, <laughs> on all different levels, uh, and related it to sacred geometry and a lot of other things. Um, so that was a very deep study for me. Um, and then later on, I used it in my feng shui certification with uh, Helen and James Jay, who uh, studied under Grandmaster Ling Young. And so I really learned more of the, I guess more sacred Chinese practice of the Qing and the different systems underneath that. And that's where I was kind of turned on to the Hua Qing Ni version, which is my favorite, so. If you go to the next one, I had no plan on, uh, really what my idea was with why, what I wanted to bring today with I Ching is not all the systems, so to speak, you know, because that's complicated. I think what's most important that just keeps on ringing true to me is kind of what we brought forth already is working with it with your own self discipline and the time learning about divine timing with it. So, and with the medicinal foods, timing is just so important. So the I Ching teaches us about the changes and, and the unchanging truth. There's the, what's manifest and then what's not manifest. And with the unmanifest is what they call it in a Chinese theory and philosophy. That is the more subtle planes of understanding that we're talking about today 
that is more the transcend, transcend, transcending work and the transmuting work and transformation work comes from the unmanifest. It doesn't come from what you can manifest outwardly here. So you've got two of those dynamics that are working at all times, yin with yawn, they're both together. Um, the best times to act and the best time, I mean, you learn about the best times to act in the manifest and the best times for inaction um, and the in, I Ching aids in understanding that. And it aids in your own development, own development, but not your own dependence. So it's not for addiction. It's not for depending on, it's not for trying to figure out your fortune. That's not what it's for. And you will not be able to use it for that because it's made in a universal divine uh, way. So you have to learn how to harmonize in order to really uh, glean the truth from it. Um, and of course, each line in every movement in every hexagram is all you know, filled with divine law, order, and truth. There are so many uh, layers, which that's why I love working with human design and the I Ching and medicinal foods is there's so much depth to it. And the next slide, this is where I had no intention on going today, <laughs> but it just kind of came forth. <laughs> and that is talking about the 28 constellation cycle. Um, in the Chinese astrology and working with this is encoded in the I Ching, there are 28 constellations that is comprised of the 10 heavenly stems, which are working with the organs, the meridian organs that we were talking about in the medicinal foods, and the 12 heavenly or terrestrial branches. Um, there's 28 constellations that they have and it works uh, along the ecliptic path or the what they call the yellow route or yellow way of the, of the path of the sun. And that is the path in your body that comes, that's the center. It's the going down and the front of the body and up the back. That is the, uh, that's that ecliptical path. Um, I think we talked about this maybe in the first episode, but a lot of, uh, and if you get acupuncture or if you get any kind of meridian work, a lot of the very um, rooted, cures are along this path. It's very deep. It can be chronic uh, in you if you're not heeding the lessons of it. And what we're most aware of is the seven chakras, which are included in those constellations, but there are energy points that are related to each constellation as well in the body. The study of Qigong the practice of Qigong, Dalian, and Tai Chi or Tai Chi Chuang uh, open up all those 28 constellations. And um, <laughs> I, um, that's why I wanted to do the Dalian to open up today because it would open up, it opens up all those 28 constellation cycles which maybe we'll have something on that, but I'd love to do it. Yeah, it feels like, I'm, I understand we don't have the time today, but it feels like that would like round. I, yeah, I, I feel like I would love some of the things you do to be like felt in the body as well. So maybe we, we find a way to do it an, at another time. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot of time, you know, about 15 minutes, but if you want to explain it, it can take about 30 minutes, you know, as you're doing that as you're doing them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love Qigong because Qigong is a practice of 
it's the medicinal practice of you know their standing postures but it is the medicinal form of practice uh, with each one of the postures and i love it for that reason tai chi chuang is more like the you know helps you learn how to be smooth with the really yin and yang together and then the Tao yin is one of the deepest oldest ancient practices um and it's i learn it as a self-massage most uh martial artists when before they do a movement they always open up with some kind of massage and a lot of them they might not even know i don't think a lot of them don't even know that some of it is Tao yin based uh, so the Tao yin originally worked with the constellations so yeah it's I love it. All right, so the next slide. I mean, you can relate a lot of things. I wanted to relate it to self-cultivation. <laughs> so the days of the week, which this is a little unusual in thinking because we think in terms of in our society now, our culture, uh, you know, Monday through Sunday, as far as our week. But in actuality is how the energy moves in the body and in the manifest form and our, for our cultivation, it, it doesn't move that way. So uh, Thursday is actually the beginning of the, the spring or the growing cycle. This works with Jupiter and it's related to the 12th hexagram and the element of wood. Then Friday is related to uh, Venus and it's related to metal. Now metal element is an interesting element. You know, it's not one that if you haven't studied, you know, this before, sometimes you might not know about the metal element. Metal element is comprised of the lungs and large intestines. And it's the most exposed element that we have because of our breath and because of the environment. We take in our environment largely through our breath and through the skin and the skin is associated with the metal element as well. So exposure to our environment first and foremost comes through this element it, it's the, a lot of um, Chinese medicine some doctors don't come don't agree with this and some some do my one that I worked under he would say that the metal element really was the first element that you started with that initiated the cycle he he rather than starting with wood he thought it started with metal because of that initiating exposure to your environment and with the breath begins the initiation so to speak so for that that reason it can be rigid because uh it's a complete openness. It's either, it's a yes or no. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's one way or the other. And that's kind of, it's a kind of a fixed movement. The hexagram is 20. Saturday, the energy is very much decreasing now on Saturday. It's moving down. Saturn is the heavenly body. And so we have earth, that is the element. And that's, uh, reposeful. A lot of people might not know that word and I had to look it up again, which I'll look it up again because I thought I saved the original uh, meaning, but it's having a calm, soothing quality, tranquil, which is really what the earth element is about. It's about balance. It's about yin and yang together. The earth element is the whole circle. It's everything. That's why it integrates all of the other elements. So it has to be in a decreasing position because 
it's actually taking in. It's the, it takes in all the other elements and integrates them in, brings them into the center and then back out. So that works with hexagram 23. So Sunday, uh, the Sunday is brilliant energy. It is when we have revival of energy available to us. And that's why I think we have a lot of uh, religious practices on that day where we receive that kind of revival energy. Um, but that's the best use of that day is for that kind of energy. And it's related to hexagram 24. It's, some uh, systems call it the return, which I think you know is what that hexagram is about. It's the return uh, where it continues to return the energy to you. That's why it's called brilliant and it resonates with the sun. Monday is the moon heavenly body and relates to shimmering element and hexagram one. And Tuesday, which relates to Mars, fire consuming hexagram 44. Wednesday, Mercury movement, water and hexagram 33. So this is how for your own cultivation of energy, uh, this is the using the days of the week to help you to have more, I guess, mindfulness with what you want to cultivate within yourself. One of the best times um, daily for self cultivation of an idea or something that you really want to nurture is right after midnight. That's the best time of day for that. And remember that this is a time of when the, that seed is idea is very fragile and new. So it's a time that you really need to nurture and build up that young energy. And the best time annually is right after the winter solstice. Uh, that's the best time to restore and build up yang for the whole year, actually. And I teach in my winter session about building up all of the organ systems during winter, because basically what you're doing when you do that with the foods is you are storing that into your bones you're storing that into your root and it is your reserve bank that you use for the rest of the year that you draw forth from so very wonderful year to use with the medicinal foods i love teresa how the circling and the spiraling because what we've been talking about in terms of the medicinal foods is how you know the season so of uh, the context of the year. And now you're bringing it right into the day. And I'm wondering, having um, talked about how, you know, we're in summer right now, right? And then uh, summer relates to certain foods and, and, and fire. Um, because we're in fire and then to think about now then okay but on Thursday I'm in wood and so is there um, a you know is there some weaving that you can help us with um, as we are let's say we're in we're eating summer you know in terms yeah. of our medicinal foods right and I, I mean I could list off some of those foods or you could list off some of those foods but then um, in that context, then how do we, you know, how does it work with this weekly kind of cycle? Yeah, that's a great question. And something when you're working with the foods like you are, are Simone, and you're having insight and 
uh, you have a lot of other things to relate it to with your past experience, a lot of wisdom, it pulls forth more insight uh, with that. Then you have that question that you're coming up with right now. And the, that question is, you know, using all this other, these other elements along with the, the main predominant element. And what, this is how, one way that you can use it with the foods. This is a way that you can use it with your own energy during the day, mm -hmm. which is going to help you to be more, have that self-discipline that we're talked about at the very beginning of the show, which is gonna help you have more willingness and insight of working with the foods and aha uh, of when you take in a food, what it's actually doing inside of your body uh, for you. Because yeah, we can taste the, the different tastes on our palate and then we can actually feel it, you know, going down our food pipe. We can feel it inside of our bodies that might be the extent of what most people feel or most people relate to with food. In actuality, a lot of times when I, uh, I can feel like say I'm too hot, uh, like it was hot the other, pretty hot here in the Midwest the other day and humid, I think about 80% humidity and you know, 95 or something degrees went for a bike ride of course during that time. <laughs> and uh you know i really needed to have a little watermelon before i did that but i didn't <laughs> so it was kind of hot so i had um i didn't have any watermelon at that time i needed to go get one but i had some cantaloupe and then i had uh some peppermint tea and what happened is i could feel the heat coming out of my eyes. Wow. You know, there was a release of heat that came out of my eyes. Mm. Now, some people don't feel that, but there's such a sensitivity that when you really work with the foods with that willingness and that self discipline or with this energy, what happens is your body informs you of what to do when. So, uh, but you do have to start the cycle and use it. So with answer your question, that's part one. You have to have the willingness, the self-discipline and already be working with something in order for you to even get to the question that you're asking. Because mm. it's not going to help you to do it unless you have the prior, first of all. Mm. So second, now you've got a layer of, okay, I'm Thursday, I want to implement wood, maybe realizing that your muscles, because the muscles are related to the, uh, the wood, the liver meridian, the gallbladder, maybe you feel some tightness in your muscles or your neck. So think, well, maybe I want some wood foods to add, okay? Mm -hmm. So that awareness, because you're practicing it with your self-cultivation, you're being aware of what uh, those relate to, then you could say, okay, well, maybe I want to have some green tea. You know, green tea, I remember, goes to the liver meridian and the uh, gallbladder, helps cool it down and helps smooth the energy out. So maybe I want to try that out, see if that helps my neck out. Maybe um, bok choy, maybe you have, maybe it's anxious energy, maybe it's from coming from a pressure center somehow. And that that wood is rising forth from. So bok choy is one of the best foods that alleviates any kind of uh, reaction to pressure, whether it's outside or inside. So therefore it's good for anxiety. So if that kind of helps you, you can go a little bit deeper where you just add on what foods are good for certain elements then you can add that on to what you're already doing. Does that answer what you were looking for? Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, great insight there. Yeah. So, I mean, I got uh, two things. I can think about myself in my own body and what, how, you know, like the example you gave with muscles on Thursday um, and then 
to add that as a layer it's i feel like we're now layering we're weaving which is something we do a lot in on in all of your design so now we're doing the layering the weaving of finer shades of meaning love it yeah Bella, you have anything on this or? Yeah, I had a reflection. I mean, I remember when we're doing, uh, we're looking at the culture sphere that we call everyday brand in Business by Design. And I was just, we were speaking about allies, we're speaking about environment, we're speaking about in the cultures, like how do you set up your work environment in the everyday? In the everyday? And I just felt like suddenly we had those allies, like Thursday, Jupiter, and the hexagram 12 and wood, like it felt like they can just come, come, come with us and, and help us with that. Uh, so I thought that was cool. And then the other thing I wonder, so when you are the hexagrams, are you looking at the, like, how are you connecting hexagram 12? Is that because of the trigrams? Like, how, how do I know, or, you know, what is the correlation between wood and hexagram 12 and Jupiter? Like, how, do, how, I, I think I missed that part. <laughs> if, if yeah, you were. Well, I haven't shared that part. It's related to the constellations. So maybe, you know, another, another class or something. Because <laughs> okay. it's a lot more in depth than probably where we want to go today, but. Okay, yeah. but there is, there is a magic to it. Yeah. If somebody wants to go deeper. Yeah. Yeah, and that Huan Chi Ni book, that'll help with that I Ching, that he introduces the constellations in there. Mm -hmm. And some of this, he introduces that. So maybe let's also, if everybody didn't get it done, let, maybe we put it on the chat, in the chat and we, I can put it in the, in the Facebook live as well, if people want to go deeper, because, you know, this is magic geometry. And I feel like maybe some people want to go down the rabbit hole and actually right. play with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, one thing I would probably do right away is, I mean, um, is I would probably on Thursday, <laughs> with some green tea in my hand, maybe, <laughs> using the qualities of Jupiter, you know, whatever with my business, then I would probably focus on hexagram 12, you know, contemplate it, you know, right away, you know, that's something that you could do and probably have like a lot of ahas, you know, that would, would relate. Yeah, that's what it feels like, like true allies that are going to give you, I mean, even depth, not just like help you go along, but actually help you grow and, and evolve. So yeah, super cool. I love that too, because the 12 is the prophet in the archetypes and our archetypes. So, you know, what does the prophet have to share with you when you're in Jupiter holding your green tea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On Thursday. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That could be a whole... Uh... Thursday routine, you know, Thursday, a live video. <laughs> and you know, that Teresa, this is the way that I feel, you know, we can't, there's, it's impossible for us to remember everything that we learn in this series, although I wish I could, you know, but when I can anchor it into my everyday, when I can, you know, this is like, this goes back to self-discipline, but maybe some of us react to the word, word self-discipline. So if we can bring in the word intention, like on that Thursday, when I sit there with my tea and I, and I feel into hexagram 12 or the prophet, like, you know, it's, it's an intentional way of bringing in the cosmos into my office or into my life. You know, it doesn't have to be this, but like, I, I, I feel like these are the little things that is about embodying this intelligence that you're bringing through, even at, at a level where we don't have to read it all ourselves, but allowing those helpers to kind of come in and start moving our cosmos with us and, and, and also harmonizing our inner cosmos with kind of the outer environment and cosmos. So like I, I would love to kind of do this for, I don't know, a few rounds and then see what, you know, what comes, what comes through. Maybe we'll do it in the inner circle or something. It, yeah. it's, it's like a, a really beautiful embodiment practice and like discovery and experiment. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, yeah, intention's a good word. Like when I was working with the I Ching in Feng Shui, you know, they call it uh, intention is what you're using in the transcendental Feng Shui. And that's mainly, you know, where I ended up in working with Feng Shui with people is I liked working with the transcendental Feng Shui because that was the unmanifest, more subtle. Because, you know, you can 
you know, people get into where can I move this in order to have money in my life, you know, and it's like, eh, you know, I, I'm not really interested in that, in that kind of working with people, you know, it's, it's um, more of a dense layer in depth, not, not too deep. Um, but working with the unmanifest with intention, like you're talking about, um, I'll give this as they call it three secret reinforcements. And that brings it into the whole integration with the, uh, to be able to bring it forth. And that is you have a, some sort of mudra, whether it's this, some sort of movement that you're doing that's intentional uh, with what your intention is, resonates with your intention. And then you have a mantra, some sort of sound that's intentional. And then you have a visual, something visually that you're doing in the physical for that. So say I did a was doing a transcendental cure for somebody's health. Um, you do that three secrets reinforcement. So say something would come through and I would feel that I want to do the, um, uh, it's a Om Mane Padme Hum chant. I would do that chant and it has to do with crossing over over into from manifest into unmanifest or unmanifest to manifest, crossing over. And sometimes it's new horizons. Sometimes people need to let go and nothing else is gonna do it, but crossing over, <laughs> you just have to make that crossover. Um, and then I might have what come through is a lot of times I would use Savarsky crystals that were big enough. And if you put one in the center of the whole space that actually is the center, it is the integration point for that whole space. So it integrates all of the energies into uh, that space or for that individual. So Savarsky crystal is a good place to put that in the center in a very powerful intentional cure. Um, so when we're talking about health in this, so that would be a visual placement. Then the Om Mani Padme Hum is the mantra that I would use of crossing over so that integration can take place. And then I would probably do this movement, which is just as far as a mudra, which is not really mudra, but it's a movement within the Qigong postures that you hold and it's, uh, and it's an earth element. So those three things together um, create transcendence within that moment for you. But once again, you have to be, you have to be mindful and yeah, that's a good, good word instead of, you know, people do react to discipline. Yeah, thank you. Do you want me to move on to the next slide? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so deconditioning with the I Ching, and one of the things that I really, um, I really love my time in pairing the medicinal foods with each one of the I Chings and with the portals of deconditioning. I mean, there's probably no, nothing that anybody can give me that can now replace that, that time for me because it's, it's, to me, it's sacred. It's a sacred time for me. So I have used it intentionally. And I guess that's what happens um, when you get going with discipline, you know, on the first level of the I Ching, with fearlessness, and I forget what the third one was, Bella, <laughs> willingness? Choicelessness, I believe. What was it? Choicelessness. Choicelessness. Yes. So with those three things, you get going on that, and I could see it's kind of like a surrender. You can go into that fourth 
uh, you know, transitional where the inner meets the outer and um, movement, you know, actually takes place. And that intention is locked in. So for me, it, it becomes whole when that, when that happens, it becomes sacred to you and nothing really takes the place of that. It's you, it's something that it's your sovereignty. It's you own it at that time. And um, so this is kind of the process. If you're going to use, you know, that kind of what we're talking about intention with the I Ching for de your own deep conditioning along with the medicinal foods. Of course, you can use each one of those that is given for each transit in the portals of deconditioning. For those who are not in that, I mean, I encourage you to be in it because it's a wonderful, irreplaceable uh, vehicle to use. Um, but if you don't have that, and you're not right there with it yet, is use this. So inquiry, 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 I can't even say that word, questioning, <laughs> being open is the first stage you to start anything. Because you're, you're at a stage of being unknown. It's you're insecure in the first part of the foundation. So there has to be a willingness to be open and to inquire. And where do you inquire? You inquire within first. And then knowing your own constitution. So to inquire within, like uh, Simone was talking about, like maybe where would I go with then after applying the, the foods for summer? Well, I mean, you know your own constitution. So say that maybe, you know, every fall you're going to get allergies, you know, that is something that is predictable for you. So you know that if allergies are related to breathing in and breathing out in the environment a lot of the times, so they're going to be related to the metal element, the lungs, the large intestine, you know that you're going to need some help with your lungs, large intestine in your own constitution. That is a, a weak point for you. So that's what I mean by knowing your own constitution. Then being receptive to your body and listening. Having some time for that. You know, right now I'm teaching, I bring in my grandson because I, you know, I taught, <laughs> he's a very energetic, active uh, lesson for me right now in my life. And um, a good example for me, you know, to share in that. Anyway, I'm teaching him about this exact thing, this exact process with foods and with his environment so that he can learn how to trust his body to inform him and have his own authority with that. Um, and doesn't have to rely on the teachers around him and in, in his environment in order to have that come to him. So educating yourself on the energetics of the foods is another way. Then by this time, <clears throat> your body is going to be informing you. You can trust that. It's going to be happening because this is the process. It will happen. Then you need to heed what's coming through. So are you going to be willing to heed it? So say um, your body, you went to the grocery store and your body kept on being drawn to uh, pears and you didn't get the pears, okay? Well, then the next day you had um, a cough and it was dry. Well, maybe you needed those pears and you, you still need those pears. Maybe you're not heeding that. So heed what you need, not what you desire at this point. It's heed what you need, okay? And the body informs you of what it needs, not what it desires, but what it needs. Then understanding that using food as medicine is a process of attunement. It actually is a tuning in 
and um, a whole process that is actually taking place. Then I would always use neutral foods. If you get confused at any point, just use neutral foods to reset and integrate into the whole because once you have that neutral foods going after three or four days or a week, whatever long it takes for you to feel centered and grounded and confident and then willing to inquire and be open, then see you've reset and integrated enough to where you can begin the process again. So if you feel stuck, and I, I do want to talk about this since talking about blockage. Um, if you have a blockage and you really say you don't have enough money coming in, say, um, for something. So, and it's just not coming no matter what you're doing. Well, I will guarantee you what you have is a spiritual blockage because things will move in the manifest if the unmanifest has no resistance. So, and if you then try to, without getting rid of that blockage or, or allowing, trying to find the flow, if what you do is you put forth more desire in the physical, you extend more in the physical to have more money, but you're not removing the spiritual blockage within, what happens is you become overextended in the physical and you actually create weakness. And now what you have is you're feeding the blockage, okay? So this is where the inner and the outer work together. And this is where the subtle attunement becomes real important. So and honesty, you got to be honest at this point. So paying attention to how your body feels in terms of cycles, and that's where tracking the cycles will help also with that kind of honesty. Any questions or insights on this? I, I love this and I am so grateful for this part of the discussion and I want to, you know, ask the people who are with us and the people who are watching, you know, what have you been, what has your body been alighting for you in your life when you're at the grocery store or just in your day-to-day -day life and, um, I, last week I was in the grocery store and I saw the eggplant and I really wanted to get the eggplant and make this um, eggplant dish that I learned how to make in Spain. And it also includes honey, it's just eggplant and honey. And um, I was like, oh, I don't think that's on the summer foods. I can't remember, I'll have to wait. Do I have time to make that dish? So I go into this whole, you know, like, <laughs> instead of just reaching over and getting an eggplant right and so my body was showing me ahead of time and I didn't heed what I needed and then the next day was the very day before you sent out the medicinal foods through uh to the pot that eggplant was the medicine and I was I just started laughing because I was like okay this is an example your body was showing you the way pointed you right to it, you didn't heed, and there's Teresa saying, eggplant. <laughs> <sighs> uh, and then just having read the eggplant, I was like, ah, oh, you know, then over the next three or four days through the weekend, I was like, and that's why you needed eggplant. And that's why you needed, <laughs> your body needed eggplant. And there it is again. And just in case you didn't hear it, you know, all of a sudden, and this too. So, uh, it really is important for us to pay attention and heat. Yeah, I, I love heat. this. I love heating what you need. I mean, I I love coming more from a heat what you need than coming from desire point, you know, uh, honestly. <laughs> hmm. So I love this and I feel like I'm doing it a lot and I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm going to ask something a little bit different because so today I actually inhaled mold and I'm really allergic to mold and I have been like all day kind of 
it's not obsessing, but like, what can I do now? And in inhaled more. They actually had this like, zzz, whatever, and they took out a piece of the wall. And I was standing there looking if it was mold on the outside, oh. like with my nose in it. And then I realized I'm covered with all this dust with mold. And instead of going into like panic about it, I am wondering when it's like something like that, like my body is kind of telling me it's cough, you know, it's like, I can't, I, I can't really hear it now because it's, it's, so what could I do? What could be like grounding foods? Like how would I discern how I can support myself for the next 24 hours or something as also emotionally, I feel like, how stupid am I, you know? Well, chrysanthemum, if you can get, I'm sure they've got some really good Asian markets where you are, but chrysanthemum, I would get, that's one of the best things for uh, any kind of exposure to it's coming through the breath into the body and mold. I mean, just, just that's it. And like fresh or cooked in water, like, like, like tea, like how would you, like how would dried, dried chrysanthemum flowers. They, they have an Asian market so make a tea out of it. Strong, mm. strong tea. Yeah. And drink it like three or four times over the next, four or five days, you know, week I would do. But it'll, it'll you said people it. can use that for any exposure of like something that isn't good for you. Okay, wow, yeah. that's really yeah. good. It, it's really good for toxins and that kind of fungus and anything like that. It's really good for you. Allergies, really good for you. And of, uh, you know, seaweed is good too. And chlorella, if you have that. Yeah, I do have that, yeah. Um, and go hug a tree. Yay, I'll, 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 I'm on my way soon. <laughs> <laughs> go hug a tree for like an hour or walk in a, you know, some, you know, where, where there's a bunch of wood open, you know, wood like that. That would be really, really good, yeah. You know, because I think that especially like, especially where we're now, but probably always, you know, when we have some symptoms, like I opened my Facebook the other day and it said, even if you feel well, do the COVID test. And I'm like, Okay, you know, it's like in we in so many times we constrict and we close down when we feel like we're exposed to something instead of like opening up and saying what what can I be receptive to now that can support me. So I kind of see that in myself, and I think you know when I see these things, I'm I I feel like you know yeah, there's a there are a lot of things that can make us contract, but how can we still be open and receptive to the things that can support us? Yeah, that's really good because yeah, a lot of people do this. What they do is they close their world and then they start avoiding and then it becomes big avenues in their world that they're avoiding little by little by little. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Hmm. I love this. <laughs> I love it. Any other questions or let's see. more insight looks like. Was this the last slide? I don't see how many um, there are. There's another going to, there should be eggplant on there. <laughs> For Simone, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is the, uh, in the portals of deconditioning, this is the uh, food for this week that relates to the 31. And the reason why is, uh, because it helps create that balance between yin and yang. For me, the 31 is about keeping that heart um, connection with the yin to the yang and that mutual attraction, keeping that open and moving. And that's what eggplant does for the body. <laughs> it, cr it creates that kind of balance. So if you have, I mean, it's wonderful with hot and heat, uh, wonderful to do. And immediately, if you do not feel what this does to your body after you have eggplant when it's hot and heat, then keep on having it until you do because it is such, it, it, it is a cold food. It's cold. It's not cool. It's cold. And it's pretty good cold. Anything that's going to be usually purple is going to have some coolness to it, purple food, because we're talking ultraviolet uh, color here. And that is 
related to mountains, the higher up, you know, more of a opposite of heat, you know, closer to the warmth. So on the spectrum. So it's gonna be more cool in nature, but this is cold, eggplant is cold. So it's sweet. The organs it goes to is spleen, stomach and large intestine. The inside's white, right? Uh, so that, you know, goes to your large intestines, that white color. It cools the body, encourages blood flow and reduces swelling. So for that, it's one of the best foods for varicose veins to help open those up and um, reduce the swelling in them. And it can relieve ulcers because of that. If you have blood in your stool because it's heat, people freak out with this, but sometimes it's because you have too much heat in the large intestine. And so you get blood there. And one of the hottest spots in the body, if you have extreme heat, it's gonna go to your anus. That's one of the hottest spots. So um, eggplant is really good for that. In what, in how would you prepare it? What would be the best way in, in from the Chinese tradition? I mean, there's all different ways. I, you know, I like, I have an eggplant Parmesan recipe that I love, you know, just, I, uh, a lot of people are used to, I don't, you know, I use um, good whole like millet flour to bread it in, you know, rather than fry it. I don't fry it like in a deep fryer or an air fryer. I saute it in a, in a pan, you know, or bake it, you know, bake it in the oven. But the other day, what I did is I just, and this is popular, uh, you know, zucchini, squash, and eggplant, chopped it up with some um, uh, diced tomatoes with a little bit of basil, Italian, and uh, seasoning. And I put it over some corn, rice, gluten-free pasta. It's really good and simple and easy. Um, I can't hear you, Bella. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> now, but so, because I've heard you can't eat like a raw eggplant, so you just cook it before or you eat it raw. Oh, no, you don't want to eat it raw. No, you cook. You cook, you so you cook. cook the zucchini and that thing, and then you put it over. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. it's toxic if you eat it raw. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, you want, you want to cook it, yeah. And some people will, um, you know, if you're making, if you're making eggplant parmesan, you usually want to soak it, like in, um, like, almond milk or dairy, whatever you want to use before, just to little softer but if you get a fresh eggplant you don't need to do that you know if it's not so hard a, more of a young egg, young eggplant um but really good and but if you're too if you're really cold and really thin and you have had you know severe anemic conditions or something like that i would not eat eggplant because it it'll take you over the edge, okay? Or if you're in, you know, someplace really cold, you're not gonna need eggplant. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next more than, there's more uh, next slide, please. All right, so this good uh, picture of the intestines there. So eggplant, this is why it removes food stagnation. And I talk a lot about food stagnation because I'm you know, i probably going to do a signature course on it because, I mean, it's just uh, something that people don't get. And I want them to get it because I think, honestly, I believe that three-fourths of the people that I come in contact with have food stagnation. And a large part of that is also because of trauma. You can create food stagnation because once again, the whole is working together, the unmanifest and the manifest. And if you have a spiritual blockage and you're trying to remove blockage in the physical, but you're not removing the spiritual blockage, it's gonna create more blockage in the physical. So 
right after uh, my Chinese doctor that I worked with that I was studying with after 9-11, he had, this is when he saw severe food stagnation occur in almost every client that came into, came, came to him. So it proved to him that a large part of food stagnation works with, you know, it's also about trauma emotionally. Um, but the process of digestion is to break down food, transport the food, absorb the nutrients, and finally remove the remains from the intestine. When this process is slowed down, then what you have is you have undigested foods that they build up. And what they do is they then create heat, then they create toxins, then they create food stagnation. And this builds up primarily, you know, the last, last line of their movement is the large intestine. Remember you said most of the heat, and what I said, most of the heat goes to the anus if the heat is not resolved. And this is the reason why. And if you have food stagnation here, you're, some of the symptoms of that are constipation, pungent smelling gas or flat flatulence, hemorrhoids with bleeding. There can be a burning sensation around the anus area. If you have absorbed toxins, now see what happens when you have too much heat and then it's creating toxins. Then what you're doing is you're absorbing the toxins back in to your body, okay? This is when you can get headaches, insomnia, you can become very emotional, bloating, weight gain, lack of energy, high cholesterol, heartburn, high blood sugar, i.e., and that can create heart attack. Children can have restless sleep, crying at night, perspiration on the skin and in a red face. To be healthy, your intestines need to be cleared and empty. To be healthy, you need to have remove resistance from spiritual blockage. So insight or questions on this? It just makes so much sense. And so for each of us, as we think about this, I mean, maybe you're not experiencing any, any of these right now, but you can go back to a place in your life when you, know, you had any of those physical symptoms and then maybe connect that to um, the blockage. And we have a great question. Um, Linda's asking, what would be an example of spiritual blockage? Um, sometimes you don't even notice that it's a spiritual blockage, like say, um, but if something's not moving in the physical world for you in the manifest world, I guarantee you will have a spiritual blockage, okay? So you can begin there if, if that's the case. Um, so some examples of spiritual blockage um, would be maybe you don't wanna be honest with yourself. Maybe you can't look people in their eyes when you talk to them. That's a spiritual blockage. Maybe this is what I notice with kids the most is, you know, if they're not looking you in the eyes, then there is something that is not resolved inside of them because they're open and innocent. So if they're not making that connection with you, then they're, you know, either they're so busy <laughs> that they're going around and they need to calm down a little bit or they have an issue that is not resolved. And it might not be the point of a blockage yet, but it's, it's an issue. And, you know, one of the things that helps to open up blockages is hugging, hugging a tree, hugging anything in nature, hugging an individual and really feeling that individual. You know, um, I think there's been, and I can't remember what 
study this was, but you know, four hugs minimum <laughs> a day for just maintenance, you know, openness, and eight for maintenance, and 12 if you really want to have, you know, true connection in your relationships and in yourself. But I look at the main part of the senses uh, and the connection with them to really identify sp spiritual blockages. <clears throat> when I was teaching with my doctorate in metaphysics, I had to identify very quickly when somebody had issues and they were spiritually blocked because that was my job. And so I had three days with those people, those teachers, my students. And when I went in, I had to be on, on it, you know? And so um, one of the quickest way that I was able to identify that is that they would avoid through their senses somehow. And if there was one that really stood out, then see, you can look into that sense, say, maybe they just weren't listening. So that's the ears. So the ears relate to the kidneys. So you've got a blockage spiritually with your root, with uh, each, there's a spirit associated with every uh, organ system as well. And maybe we could share that here. The liver is associated with the, uh, is associated with consciousness and awareness. So therefore it relates to your sleep, it rules your sleep, it rules dream, dreaming. That's the spirit spirit associated with that or the soul, so to speak. In the uh, fire, it's associated with shin or, you know, that opening spirit of transformation. And it's the overall spirit of the heart. Um, the spirit that's associated with the metal element has to do with really being able to taste the nectar of your life. And that essence of something, the essence of, of something, the nectar of that. Um, it is also when you're attached, it shows up in the metal element as well with any kind of attachment and it can relate to ghosts or addictions or any kind of spirits that are associated with attachments. Um, and then the earth element, the spirit has to do with um, well, it's the spirit of wholeness. It is the spirit of um, I forget the exact name that they call that, but it has to do with really con connection in with the that figure eight energy and the whole yin yang and whole so it's the connecting between the yin and yang the connection there and then the kidneys have to do with the spirit of the root or the ancestors of what who came through you it's the whole ancestral spirit so that would help you to identify that as well what where your blockage is Great, great, great question. And somebody says, could it be that any or any of the shadows of decondition can also be spiritual blockages? Yes, I, I do believe that, yeah. I wanted to have some time with any questions on foods for people or where are we with the time? <laughs> yeah, Bella, Bella, can you advance the, to the next slide, please? <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> next, next week, we're gonna go into uh, the finale and more weaving the PHS and the medicinal foods together. That'll be exciting. That'll be an experiment for me, uh, you know, because I've just been starting to do this, this, this last year and a half. So uh, 
having more insight with that and discussion will be real re enriching. I'm looking forward to that. Fantastic. And our last, the second to the last slide, Bella. Thank you. So if you are loving this medicinal food series, Living the Body, and you are inspired to work with Teresa directly, you can reach her at spiritualrenewalretreats at gmail.com. And she is graciously offering a 25% off if you reference the Living the Body series. And this, Teresa, is also part of our portals of deconditioning um, through the whole year. And if you want to experience her and our, us our, our, through Portals of Deconditioning, we have a, a coupon for you there. You can access it at bit.ly uh, slash 64 doors dash courses and use the keyword cauldron to get your discount. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Teresa, again, another action-packed, wisdom-rich, fantastic um, time um, with you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for your gracious sharing of all of this wisdom. And we have our last call next Tuesday, so we hope you'll join us then. Until next Tuesday, take care. Thank you.